welcome to or welcome back to my channel my name is Ipawa it's been a while and usually we'll talk about culture talks but I have been working on reinventing this channel into a crime and mystery channel for Namibia and Africa as a whole so I'll be introducing you to crime stories that have happened and shocked Namibia and beyond our borders so stay tuned for our very first case on our very first case we have the case of Miriam Nanjato Miriam Nanjato was a 24 year old young lady living and working around the Ongwediva and Oshakati area she was born in a Lombe village which is plus minus 15 kilos from Ongwediva and uh, she grew up with her siblings her mom and her dad, her dad uh, passed away when she was um, really young. She was described as somebody that was uh, petite and uh, very calm and loving. She loved cooking, you know, she was described as hardworking by her family. Just uh, an all in all young 24 year old. Uh, at that time, Miriam was working at uh, the National Institute of Pathology in Oshakati as a lab assistant. In the year 2004, Miriam had met a boy. At that time, Miriam had gone to high school at um, Ipumbu Senior Secondary School in Oshakati. And uh, she met a boy, they started dating. And uh, this boy's name is um, Ananias Nailenge. Nailenge was born in Epoko village in the Okalongo constituency. Um, you know, he was smitten by Miriam. They dated as high school sweethearts. I'm not sure if they went to the same high school or not. I think uh, Nailenge was said to have gone to a high school in Ongwediva and uh, Miriam went to Ipumbu. Nailenge was described as uh, also a very calm young man. He was raised by his mother and his grandmother in Epoko village. And um, it said that Nailenge has never met his father because when his mother was pregnant he his father left for south africa and he was never heard from again so um yeah he was just like any other village boy growing up in the village he went to school uh, at the local combined school in epoko uh, and as i mentioned earlier he went on to high school in Ongwediva, I think, where he completed his grade 10 and Miriam had completed her grade 12 and went on to get a, a certain certificate. So the couple dated for nine years and in 2012, they decided to break off their relationship. So they did, they went their separate ways. There's no, there, there's no information on what really happened or what led to their breakup, but yeah. They broke up, but uh, a year later, they decided to reconcile and um, mend their relationship. So they did that, and uh, unfortunately for Miriam, she didn't know that um, Nailenge, during their breakup, had actually impregnated another woman. Uh, she Nailenge says he had told her, but uh, it's believed that she actually uh, found messages on his phone uh, about you know him being having a child actually and yeah so Ananias claimed that um, him and his um, the mother of his child actually broke up they were not in a relationship he was just in touch with her because of the baby but it turned out that was not the case because uh, Miriam kept kept finding messages from this woman and it's not just um, talks about the baby it's more than that obviously these people are actually in a relationship and uh, yeah basically Nailenga was playing both ladies he was with Miriam and he was with the mother of his child and uh, his family also said that they have never even heard of Miriam they I recently had met the lady who has a child with Nailenge and he introduced her as his woman all right so yeah they kept having problems about this whole thing of the mother of his child and Nailenge claims that uh, Miriam even started threatening him 
threatening that uh, if he kept um, talking to the mother of his child, uh, something bad is going to happen either to him or to his child. Hmm. You know, this is what Nailenge is or has claimed. So anyway, um, after that, despite everything, the couple continued with their relationship and um, sometimes it was good, sometimes it was bad and um, everything was mostly caused by this argument about Ananias being in touch with the mother of his child. He claims that uh, it was just because he had a child with this woman that he was actually, you know, in touch with um, her. But, I mean, this is the same guy whose family said that he went to introduce the woman that he has a child with as his woman. So, obviously, the, the, the one thing that caused problems in their relationship is his infidelity. He was cheating on her. I don't know who was cheating on who with who. I don't know. So they continued their relationship. The couple would post uh, each other on Facebook. I think mostly Miriam would post uh, pictures of Nailenge on Facebook, write cute messages on his wall, and he would respond, you know. But then something terrible was brewing in their relationship. And that was Nailenge's infidelity. So on the 4th of February 2014, Miriam had um, woken up to just another, you know, Tuesday morning and she got ready to go to work. She hoped for a great day. She went on to take a cab to her workplace, which was um, the NIP, the National Institute of Pathology. She was a lab assistant there. She, she took a cab, Shakati traffic, you know, she got to work, she greeted her colleagues and she went on to do her job. Uh, she later on got a call from her mother that uh, she was in town. She came to um, make birth certificates for her grandchildren. Her mother's name was Miss Fanny Nanjato. And she, she asked her mother to come and uh, visit her at work um, because she misses her and, you know, she just wants to see her. She's in town, you know. So the mother went to visit her daughter at um, the Oshakati State Hospital where the NIP officers were at the time, or I'm not sure if they are still there. And yeah, they met, they chat. She said that Miriam gave her a handshake and a hug, and she asked about everybody at home. How is everybody? How are they doing? You know, normal conversations with the parents. And uh, the mother had to, to leave um, to go and do what she came for. And yeah, unfortunately for Miriam's mom, she didn't know that was the last time she would see her daughter alive. Now, I'm not sure if Nailenge had contacted Miriam before Miriam's mom contacted her, but it said that uh, Nailenge had called Miriam to inform her that he had gone to Otapi, which is about 60 kilometers out of Oshakati, to, for a court case of assault that he had to appear for the next day. And he claims that uh, Miriam was displeased by this. She was not happy that he was going to court um, the day, to another town for a court case that was actually the next day and not on that same day. She didn't trust him. So an argument broke out again. She asked him to come back so that she can come and remove her things from her room, uh, from his room. Now, it said that um, Nanjato, Miriam, was the one who was uh, taking care of um, Nailenge because Nailenge had just lost his job as a taxi driver. She was paying for his rent. She was taking care of him financially until he got back on his feet, you know. She loved him that much, okay? And she was 24. She was maybe naive or she just really loved him, you, you know. So anyway, um, Nailenge says that he came back from Otapi. He called Miriam to come. Since she wanted, she said that she wanted to, to remove her things from his uh, room. So Miriam came and um, an argument broke out. And Nailenge says that Miriam started threatening Nailenge again about his child. She, she kept saying that she's going to harm him and his child if he kept getting in touch with the mother of his child again. And I will never understand how Nailenge 
uh, kept claiming that Miriam was threatening the life of himself and his child and he still chose to stay with her you know like I mean if somebody is really threatening you won't you you know leave them alone because they are threatening not only your life but also that of your child but that's his, that those are his claims and um, he says that um, Miriam then um, kept threatening him of course that he, she's going to kill his child and himself and then she pushed him and hit him with her handbag so Nailenga says that he flipped he took a knife and he started he stabbed Miriam and then he cut her throat decapitating her now decapitating means that the body and the head were not attached he decapitated her after Nailenge um, killed Miriam by decapitation he went on to send a text message to a lady called Nangula now Nangula was renting in the same ro room complex or whatever as um, Nailenge and she was kind of like friendly she and Miriam were friendly I'm not sure if they were really friends or they just knew each other through Nailenge and uh, he sent Nangula a text uh, message saying Nangula go to my room you will find Miriam's body I killed your friend and Nangula was shocked because you know you don't expect such a message on a random Tuesday and she thought oh what a bad joke you know but then something told her you need to go and see what's going on so nangula left her workplace and uh, she went to their uh, room complex or whatever and she found a flock of people and the police was already there and um what actually happened was after anania sent nangula a text message he also called his um uncle who was a police officer to inform him of what he had done and uh, the uncle informed his colleagues and they headed um, to Ananias room complex right away where they found Ananias locked room and they found uh, they broke down the door and they found Miriam's body in Ananias room now some sources say Miriam's body was found on the bed wrapped in a blanket and her head in the corner of the room others say she the body was still attached she her, her head was just slightly hanging on basically but uh, i'm not sure which sources are right but yeah her body was found and um detectives came in and her body was taken to the mortuary at um oshakati and yeah, a post mortem was um, done. Anyway, after everything that has happened, uh, Ananias decided to go on the run and he went to his village of Epoko, which was also 60 kilometers out of Shakati. And uh, he is said to have tried to commit suicide. He tried to hang himself on a tree. And uh, unfortunately, the branch that he used was too thin or whatever. and. His weight was too much it broke and um, he then resorted to drinking like heavy drinking around nearby bars and whatnot um, and he later on called the police and informed them about his whereabouts and he was arrested the next day at a bar heavily drunk and so Ananias was taken to um, the police station where he gave um, a written confession immediately and uh, he appeared in court on the 6th of February where he told um, um, magistrate Mika Namuya that he was guilty of killing Miriam and uh, that he was um, doing it in self-defense or he did it in self-defense so he he pleaded guilty immediately and uh, he said that he didn't mean to kill Miriam. He only wanted to harm her. And the judge, um, um, the magistrate, the magistrate, um, Mr. Namuya, asked 
him. When you stabbed her and you cut her throat, did you think that would barely harm her? Question, you know, because if he really, he, if he just wanted to harm her, how could he do such a thing that he actually decapitated her? You don't decapitate someone hoping they will just be harmed, okay? So he says that no, it's because it was his first time and he didn't know that it would kill her. Okay. So um, at a later stage, Ananias also tried to commit a suicide during his trial awaiting period. At some point, he even broke out of uh, jail with some other inmates. He was rearrested. And then he started claiming that he has been hearing voices. So he wanted to be evaluated by a, a psychiatrist or something. And um, two psychiatrists um, came in and evaluated his um, situations. And uh, the names of the psychiatrists were Ndahambele Lamtoko and Hile Ninjaba, who claimed that on the 30th of June 2014, Ananias was able to give um, a very clear recollection of the, of the crime. And uh, they also concluded um, that he was fit to stand trial. So Ananias uh, went on to stand trial in the Oshakati um, High Court, where he was sentenced to 35 years in prison. He was sentenced on the 18th of May, the year 2020, by High Court Judge Marlene Tomasi. He was uh, found guilty for the murder of Miriam Nanjato two months prior. Ananias is now serving his sentence in the Oshakati prison.